All right. Hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started now. Thanks for joining us today for a special live presentation on how the iPad works in business. We have Joe Schubach with us today as our presenter. Joe is a senior system engineer at Apple dedicated to MacMall and our parent company, PCMall. He is responsible for providing pre- and post-sales technical expertise. He has a comprehensive understanding on the best practices of integrating and deploying Apple systems such as the Mac and iPad in today's business organizations, and we are very excited that he is here presenting for us today. And before I go ahead and turn it over to Joe, I'd like to cover just a few housekeeping items. Um, this presentation is going to be recorded, and the link will be available on www.macmall.com following or a couple days after the presentation. Also, we will be hosting a live Q&A session um, after uh, Joe presents, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A panel that can be found in the bottom right corner of your screen. You'll all notice that Joe is sharing his uh, application right now, and when that happened, you might have lost your panels. If you just hover over the Viewing Joe's application and then click on, uh, you can click on your chat panel and your, um, if you scroll over to the right, there is an arrow. If you select that arrow, you can go ahead and open up your Q&A panel as well so you guys can ask questions. So now, um, that's all I wanted to cover. So Joe, I think I'll pass it over to you. Well, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Yeah, you're sounding good here. Wonderful. And do we see on the screen iPad at work? We sure do. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for dialing in today. Uh, I was asked by PC Mall to uh, present to you uh, some, some information about iPad and the enterprise, how we're seeing the iPad being used out there. And I put together a short slide deck, and I think it is, uh, has fairly relevant data. Uh, I'm going to start off by talking about some IT info, and then uh, once we get through that IT info, we'll, we'll jump into some uh, use cases and how, how we see iPads being used in, uh, in, in real-world situations out there. So our first slide here talks about the fact that um, as of the end of March, Apple has sold 300, more than 365 million iOS devices. Right? A lot of phones, a lot of iPads. Apple owns about 80% of the tablet market at this point. With the iPad, it's by far the most popular, sort of dominating the market. And uh, you're, we're not only seeing them, uh, you know, floating around in, in people's hands in the in the public sector, but uh, we're actually seeing them uh, being used uh, to a tremendous degree within corporations and uh, small, medium-sized businesses. And uh, the reason is that it's so successful in that space, I think, has to do with the fact that Apple has created such a wonderful user experience. It translates really well to a business environment. So um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at some information. Uh, you, just a little information about the iPad. You probably already know that. We have the new Retina display. Very fast device. It's a wonderful user experience. And uh, if, you, if you haven't gotten your hands on one, you really should try it out. It's really beautiful. And as I was saying earlier, it's not just a great consumer device. It's also a great business tool. We're seeing them everywhere. And we're seeing them being used as a productivity tool, i.e., we're seeing them being used for email, for creating documents, right, uh, just a general productivity tool. But we're also seeing them being used as appliances, right, so with a very specific dedicated function. So, you know, in, instead of a, a clipboard with a piece of paper on it, you could put an iPad in, in place of that and do direct data entry as opposed to having to type something in to a, uh, the computer later on. Uh, huge time saver. And that's just one of many applications we're seeing for the iPad. But it's being used throughout businesses in one of those two ways, though, either as a productivity tool or as, a, uh, as an appliance, right, with a very specific pointed uh, purpose. So uh, a little bit about why the iPad makes sense, and the iPhone for that matter, why they make sense in, in business, right? Um, first of all, Exchange, right? Uh, pretty much the ubiquitous back end for, for mail servers. Lotus is also supported, but uh, and they both work over ActiveSync. Uh, so if, anywhere in the world you are, as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection and you, you can get to the, your ActiveSync ports at your uh, business, you're in business. You get you, you got your you get your email, you'll get your contacts, calendar. Apple has written the Mac OS and the iOS, the, the OS that runs on the iPad and the iPhone. We've written both of them to seamlessly integrate with, uh, with the, uh, 
with the enterprise, the existing back-end infrastructures, be those Microsoft created or IBM created or what have you. Um, we'll get a little bit more in depth into the different aspects, but as you can see, we have VPN support, we have uh, Wi-Fi authentication support, uh, anything that's out there, the iPad can handle it. It can, it can integrate seamlessly. So let's get into uh, some of that integration. So like I said earlier, Exchange, you can get your mail, contacts, calendars, and reminders on your iPad anywhere in the world, okay? Uh, people love it. They, they love it. They, they, they get these things for Christmas, right? They get an iPad for Christmas or for the birthday, and they bring it into the workplace, and they can work with IT, and they can enroll uh, their device maybe uh, with Exchange, and they can get their work, all their work done on the iPad, right? They can sit at home at night on the couch and, and knock out a few emails, or they can use it when they're in the office, right? Super light. It's instant on. It's a great business tool, and what we're finding it is uh, becoming very much uh, ha having a huge presence in, in small to medium to large business. Um, moving on to the middle column there, you can see VPN support. Apple has support in the OS natively for uh, the, the most common, obvious VPNs that are out there, uh, which would, types which would be IPsec, L2TP, and PPTP. And uh, if you happen to host an SSL VPN solution, such as you know F5 or Junipers or Sonic Walls, um, you can download an app from those companies um, on the apps, Apple's App Store, and you can VPN using those SSL apps. Okay, and um, you can also use certificates to authenticate. So if that's something you're interested in doing with VPN, you can do that. Uh, we, we fully support that. And also we support something called VPN on demand, which is a great user experience. If you have a certain type of ASA device or, or multiple, uh, you know, F5 and Juniper have devices that support VPN on demand too. Um, but what I'm getting at here is that it's a user experience where you, you try to hit an internal domain while you're outside of your firewall and uh, the, the OS will recognize that it's inside your domain and will automatically VPN for you. So you'll be automatically prompted to authenticate. And if you use certificates, the authentication is done using the certificate. You're not even prompted. We do this at Apple. It's great. So if I try to hit an Apple resource with my iPad while I'm outside of the office, it'll automatically VPN me and authenticate with a certificate. And it's, it's, it's transparent to me as the end user. I didn't even know authentication happened. I'm just all of a sudden inside the firewall. So what a cool user experience. Uh, and the last column on the right there, we have uh, Wi-Fi, right? Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, we support obviously every authentication protocol that's out there for Wi-Fi. And um, we use certificates, uh, we have support for certificates as well. So if you have an 802.1x environment where you're authenticating with certs, we can handle that, right? So uh, let's hop over to the, the next slide. And let's talk a little bit about security and, and how Apple has taken very seriously security from the very get-go when we, when we developed the iPad and the iPhone, we had security in mind. So I um, like to think of our, our security as uh, layered, right? Starting at the hardware layer and moving all the way up through networking and to applications. So let's take a look at it, it, this slide, by the way, has a lot of uh, – uh, various security related terms we have answers for everything you see here so if you're if you're wondering about anything uh, the, any of these items on the screen rest assured we support all of these okay uh, if you have any questions about security uh, if you go to apple.com slash iPad slash business uh, you'll find that is the landing page for our iPad marketing and uh, there are a couple of links within that site, that area, that where you can download a security guide, iOS security guide, and you'll find uh, it's a really great white paper. It'll tell you from the bottom up how Apple has deployed a secure, uh, well, as I should say, uh, created the iPad and the iPhone to be a secure devices and, uh, and the iOS for that matter. Uh, a really interesting read, about 15 pages long, and uh, it'll make any IT person uh, rest uh, comfortably at night. So, um, not only are we secure, but we also uh, have are scalable, right? From an IT perspective, so uh, if you look at the uh, if, if you look at the iPad, right, it's a device that should be managed, right? Just like a, a PC would be managed, right? You're, you know, people figured out a long time ago you can't just put a hundred or you know fifty or even thousand. Uh, PCs out there on people's desks and expect things to run smoothly, right? No, you have to have some central management. So Apple built into uh, the iOS uh, some APIs, some support for some APIs called mobile device management, right? So uh, using a mobile device management software, you can remotely manage, you know, thousands and thousands of devices or 
five devices, whatever you decide you want to manage. But the point is, all those help desk calls that are coming in, hey, you know, you get questions about, hey, I need to reset my password. I need, you know, how do I get into VPN? How do I get an exchange? All these can be automatically configured from a centralized location, and you can get cut out all that help desk traffic, right? And uh, so it, in terms of IT's uh, interaction with the mobile with mobility, this is the first place to start. Get an MDM solution out there. They can be very inexpensive and very simple, uh, or they can be very quite quite expensive, but incredibly feature rich. And uh, and by the way, they're all easy to use. I've used the most uh, complex ones and the most simple ones. And um, in, in in terms of their feature set, they're all really simple. So if you're in IT and you're worried about trying to learn a new management tool, rest assured it's going to be really simple for you. Uh, Apple has one. Uh, a mobile device management solution called Profile Server. It's included in Lion Server. So if you have a Mac uh, sitting around that supports Lion uh, or Server, um, you can you can install the server operating system on there. It's a forty nine nine uh, forty nine ninety nine dollar um, <clears throat> it's forty nine dollars and ninety nine cent dollar solution that is downloadable from Apple's App Store. So if you're running Lion, launch the App Store and um, do a search for Lion Server, and you'll you'll find it. Install it, and it's it's an addition to it's on top of the OS, if you will, on top of Lion, and um, you have a profile, an MDM server at that point, a mobile device management server that can remotely manage all your your portable devices. That's the least expensive solution. Uh, it doesn't scale uh, wonderfully. Uh, if you want a much more feature-rich uh, experience, uh, you can purchase a solution like Mobile Iron or AirWatch. Those seem to be the most uh, uh, popular in the enterprise at this point. I know the PC Mall services deploys MDM solutions on a daily basis, and uh, they seem to sell quite a bit at both of those solutions, AirWatch and, and um, Mobile Iron. If you want to learn more about MDM solutions, uh, then uh, you might want to visit enterpriseios.com. Uh, it's a, it's a third-party website, um, and at the top of that website, you'll find a link that says Compare MDMs. Click that button, and you can take a look at all the MDM solutions that are out there and take a look at all their features, their licensing schemes. Uh, it's in a giant matrix. It's really nice and simple to use, and you can do a little window shopping. You might also want to do a search for Gartner's uh, uh, Magic Quadrant study of MDM. It's a really good re reference as well. Anyway, uh, let's, now that I've talked a lot about uh, where to learn more about MDM, let's actually talk about MDM, right? What is MDM? Mobile device management is a way for you in IT to centrally manage a fleet of iOS devices. And they can be bring your own devices or they can be corporate owned devices, right? And um, it, the, the distinction is moot, and you'll see why in a few minutes. But the point is that you can install and remove configuration profiles from a centralized location. You can manage apps, i.e., you can you know have apps installed on a remote device, right? You can query devices for compliance. If, if an end user has installed an app you don't like, you can you know automate them getting a nasty gram email, right? You can you can automate having them unenrolled so they lose access to the corporate network, right? Um, and, and, and very importantly, you can remote wipe and lock these devices. You can remotely reset an end user's password if they've forgotten, right? So um, I, we've thought of everything. It's, it's, it makes for a really nice management experience. And uh, it will save you money to deploy a nice MDM solution to get rid of some of those calls. So uh, this is, uh, I'd like to take a few seconds and talk about the life cycle of an iOS device in the corporate in a corporation uh, in a business and and how IT interacts with those so um, first when you get an iPad you have to activate set it up and then um, you're going to configure manage some policies for it you're going to deploy some applications and then lastly remove and wipe devices this is you know when you retire them or if they get lost or stolen this is generally how you interact with an iOS device or a tablet or any mobile device so um, to start with when you when you buy an iPad you take it out of the box as an end user, let's say a bring your own scenario, right? An end user gets one for their birthday, whatever. They set it up. They put their personal settings on it. They put their photos on there, their music. They put in their own Apple ID. They install their own apps, right? This is the typical user consumer experience, right? Um, to some degree, even if it's a corporate-owned device, you're going to do a little of this stuff, right? You're at least going to activate it. You've got to do that to turn it on and activate it. Uh, you might set up some iCloud syncing. You're going to connect to Wi-Fi, that's for sure, right? And then step two, then, is to make it a corporate device. So if it's a bring-your-own-device scenario, uh, your end user brings it in, and they, they want to connect to the, to the network, well, uh, you, know, they, you know, they want to get their exchange mail, right? They want to get on Wi-Fi and all this stuff. 
Well, you as a corporate IT person would want to allow them to do that. It's going to make them more productive. Obviously, they're going to answer probably answer email at night, right? Um, uh, CIO Magazine uh, got a quote from a CIO that said they get 240 more hours of work out of an employee with, uh, with, with an iPad. 240 hours annually because, you know, when you're drinking your coffee and you see your, you know, read the newspaper and you see that mail icon with your exchange mail and you see, uh, you know, 52 emails on the weekend, you're probably going to try to knock out as many of those as possible so that Monday morning is not such a nightmare, right? So um, anyway, I, I digress. The point is that we're taking a consumer device and then we're turning it into a corporate device by enrolling them in MDM, right? Now, in order to give them access to Exchange and give them access to VPN and, and Wi-Fi and all that stuff, you as a corporate owner need to say, okay, well, I'll let you do that, but in Exchange, you're going to have to face some restrictions. You're going to have to have a certain passcode length and complexity, and it's going to expire on a certain date, you know, basis. And not only that, uh, we don't allow YouTube for one reason or another, so we're going to turn YouTube off on your iPad. Do you... You know, then you ask your, your end user, are you willing to, to do that? And nine times out of ten, I'm sure they're going to say, heck yeah. And then you enroll them in MDM. Okay, that's our first bullet point, right? So you can enroll them in MDM. They then have access to Exchange, VPN, Wi-Fi, other settings. They, you've turned off their camera potentially. Um, if you're wondering what exactly you can do in terms of MDM, uh, in terms of managing these devices, what features you can turn on and off, take a look at that security doc I talked about earlier at apple.com slash iPad slash business. Uh, take a look there, and you'll find in that security doc a list of all the things that you can configure with MDM. All right? So anyway, I, I digress. So uh, again, uh, a passcode policy is applied. They have to enter this passcode. And when you, when you force your end user to turn on their passcode, what you've done at the hardware level is forced encryption of the device. Every iPad is 256-bit AES encrypted. So, and, so in order to activate that encryption, though, you have to have a passcode on the device. And uh, I would suggest that the complexity be longer than the default four characters. With MDM, you can make it out, force them to be alphanumeric. You can force them to be a certain length, a certain expiration rate, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something in, with MDM you can configure. Um, so anyway, uh, the device is then encrypted at that point. Your exchange data is secure. Uh, all of your corporate data is secure at that point, all right? Um, and so you can see a couple of other things that you can do with MDM. You can install certificates, configure account settings, basically try to prevent some of those calls into the help desk so you don't have to do a one-by-one -one configuration of all these devices. Uh, the last little black square you see in the lower right-hand corner, something missing, right? Well, that's, that has to do with uh, managed applications. With MDM, you can request that your end users install applications, okay? So um, those apps can be free apps from the App Store. You can request that they install those. You can request that they install... Uh, B2B apps. Uh, when I say B2B apps, these are apps that a corporation, I'm, I'm sorry, a developer may have written for you, right? So let's say that your business requires a certain app. You don't have any in-house developers to write the app. You can approach a developer uh, that has developed an app similar to what you want, and they can customize it for you, right? And um, Apple, this is very common nowadays, and Apple has a system for payment around that scenario where um, we'll provide redemption codes to you to give to your employees, right? And so it's still, they're still hosted via the App Store, but you can't access the app that's cut, you know, built for your company unless you have a certain little redemption code that Apple's going to give to you. And so you, you give these redemption codes out to all the employees that need the application that you had custom built, right? And they plug in the redemption code and the app downloads onto their device. All right, and then um, the last scenario, besides an app store app or a business to business app, the last scenario is an in house app. This is an app that would be written in house, i.e., by your own developers. So if you have developers in house that know how to write iOS apps, they can do that, and they can uh, the apps can be downloaded directly um, from your servers. Apple's not involved. Involved. Um, you, so so do realize part of our security model for our applications application layer is that Apple vets every app that's put on the App Store to make sure that, uh, A, it's not doing anything um, that's violating any security requirements and doesn't have any malware in it. And lastly, um, we, we check it for a UI experience, so all the buttons have to work properly and all that good stuff. So um, we do that, and then we post the app on the App Store, and every app that you download has a certificate associated with it, okay, that you don't get to see. 
And that certificate has information about the, the app. And every time you launch an app, the app is verified as being the actual app so that a bad guy can't come along and put an app called YouTube on your, in place of the real YouTube app, right? So um, that's, that's a vector, right, an attack vector where people will put pretend they'll fool you into launching an app you think is a is a good an app you really want to launch but it's actually a bad app right that does bad stuff so apple protects you against that kind of stuff but anyway these in-house apps that you develop at your own um, site apple doesn't have anything to do with it we don't review that you can just give it directly to your your end users so um anyway apps that you as it deliver to your uh, you know, deliver to your, your end users, those are quote unquote flagged as managed and you can actually delete those apps. You can remove those with MDM. So um, if you bought an app for your end user and then they win the lottery and take off, you can always just delete that app from their device remotely. And not only that, you can remove them from MDM altogether and they can't access Exchange anymore. They can't access VPN anymore, right? But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, let's move on here. Okay, so of course, uh, being in IT, you're probably very interested in, in, in the fact that, like I said a moment ago, you can remove somebody from the corporate environment. Their corporate data is removed. They can no longer access it as soon as you unenroll them from MDM. And uh, what's wonderful about a bring your own device scenario is that end users' personal data, i.e. their photos, their music, and the apps they purchased, whenever they're unenrolled, that data isn't touched, right? So their personal device is returned to a corporate, you know, a consumer device, right? And it's not, none of their photos are touched. They're just still there. Their music's still there, uh, even though the person won the lottery and they're, they're gone from the company, right? So um, that, that's always a wonderful thing to, to know. And, and also, you can, if the device is lost or stolen, you can remotely uh, delete the entire contents of that device, right? And you can do that via Exchange Active Sync, or you can do it via mobile device management. It's just a, you know, it's a, it's a command that is sent out to the iPad to delete the encryption key, okay? So like I said earlier, as long as you have a passcode on an iPad, then the device is actively encrypting everything that's on the device, right? And then um, there's a, a key that's generated, and you'll read this in the white paper, by the way, so you don't have to remember this, but in the white, security white paper, it explains that there's a, a key that's generated the minute you boot up an iPad for the first time, right? And that key is what's used in conjunction with your passcode to to encrypt data, right? So when you remove that, when you do a remote wipe, you delete, you're securely deleting that key, and all the content of that 256-bit encryption is then uh, inaccessible for hundreds of thousands of years of brute force, right? So um, rest assured that this, when you do a remote wipe, brother, it is remote wiped, and it, there's no getting that content back. So, um, so there you go, and and. Not only can you do that via Active Sync and do it via MDM, you can also manually go in and uh, and do a device wipe. So it's it's under settings, under general. You're looking. All right. So um, just to set the uh, set the atmosphere here, a little information. This is this is what's happening with the Fortune 5. The Fortune 5. There have been some some polls done by various think tanks, and. Um, what we've heard is that 94%, more than 94% of the Fortune 5 are deploying and testing the iPhone, and the same thing for the iPad. And then more than 20% are looking at Mac as a standard, right? So, you know, when the refresh cycle comes, instead of having to get a PC each three years or whatever, um, many, many companies in the Fortune 5 are now giving an option to get a, a Mac or a PC. And uh, I know we're not here to talk about Macs, but um, they, they really make sense in business, and we're, our market share is growing by on a daily basis, we have a 84% year-over-year growth on Mac, uh, and 151% uh, year-over-year growth on on iPad. 151. Most companies are glad if they get 30%. The PC market right now is at 3%, right? Sometimes negative three, depending on who you talk to. We're going at 84, right? Uh, so um, we're we're really happy with the numbers. And if you if you ever want to have a conversation about why Mac please reach out to me. I'm glad to talk to you. Macs really do make sense. They are, they're, they're a great way to save money, believe it or not, for IT. It's, it's, it may, you may find that hard to swallow right now, but I think once we have a conversation, you'll walk away uh, feeling quite comfortable with the ideas that Mac, Macs really do fit well in the enterprise and they're, they're a money, money-saving endeavor. But anyway, um, yeah, so, so why is it that the Fortune 5 is so interested in the iPad? And um, I, I think the answer to that is that it can save you a lot of money. 
And it, not only is it going to make everybody's lives more enjoyable because people love iPads, right? It's a great user experience. People like to use them, right? 